In this video, I'll be going over the stock plugin updates in Studio 1.5. Let's get to it, shall we? This plugin is probably the one you want to hear the most. It is the rotor. It emulates a Leslie cabinet, which is a high frequency driver and a low frequency driver that spin. I know it sounds crazy, but this was a thing. This is the pad track without it. It's um, being affected by an auto filter as well and a big crusher. And then when we put it through the Leslie, it's kind of out of this world, right? And we can even slow it down to a slow speed. And you can hear the high frequency driver slow down to this predetermined horn speed. And you can hear the low frequency woofer slow down to this speed. You can automate this and it ramps up to the speeds that you have predetermined. The drive sounds like this. It's kind of crunchy, nasty. And the horn cue sounds like this. And you can even change the distance, balance, and stereo spread. So it doesn't sound like it gets too far away. It definitely could help you have something sit in the mix a little better. And in the mix. This is the analog delay, as you can tell from the label and the colors from the 70s that accurately represent an analog tape machine digitally. I digress. Let's listen to what it sounds like. This is a hi-hat track that I've got going. It's pretty simple. All right, now let's play it back with the analog delay on it. It's really adding a lot of complexity and vibe without getting too in the way. So it does have this filter, the low cut and the high cut filter to take up less space in your mix. I've got it on a quarter delay, but we could do a longer one or a shorter one. I think the quarter works best for this track, although your mileage may vary. Width knob all the way up, down. Two different types of ping pong modes. You've got some and two channel. I don't know, it doesn't sound as wide to me. I really like the way some sounds. And you've got an LFO, which is cool. And you know, all analog delays came with LFOs. but they do have motors. Adjusting the motor also creates a similar effect. There it goes. That's what I was looking for. The sound of the motor in the tape machine not being consistent. Speaking of delays, we have the groove delay. Let's listen to the melody without the groove delay. And there's a little delay in the synth patch that is playing the melody, but with the groove delay engaged, you get all kinds of really cool bounce that I didn't have before. I don't want to overdo it. And you can adjust all of these taps individually. They can go wherever you want to put them and it could sound cool. I don't know. There you go. There are plenty of presets also. So the groove delay is a pleasant surprise. All right, moving right along. Oh, next up is the chorus effect. It's kind of subtle on this track, but I have it on another track. Let's play it without the chorus. Then I'll add it. It just gets a little wider and fuller. It's very subtle. And the spread button works pretty good normally on this particular track. I think it goes out of phase a little bit. 
There are different modes. There's a doubler mode, which will be a little more obvious, I think. But with all those delays, I don't want to blur it too much, so I'm leaving it in chorus mode. This is the snare track without the chorus on. Very 8-bit and crunchy. We add the chorus. It has kind of a glitch effect. I've got it in the doubler mode with three voices, so it's like... <laughs> and this is adjustable. And the delay time is adjustable as well. You really get a glitch. It's too much. And no chorus. And it just adds a whole extra vibe. No chorus. Chorus. That's both choruses, and I did want to mention the Big Crusher. I don't know if there's any actual updates to it, but I've been using it a ton on this track, going for an 8-bit sound. This is the Big Crusher on the snare. I'll turn it off. It's kind of a lo-fi snare anyway. Add the Big Crusher. And you can do some crazy stuff. There you go. It sounds like... Uh, it sounds like a Game Boy or something. And I have more Bit Crusher on the bass. And if I have it at 100%, it's nasty. Uh, I feel like 30% or so, 33. This is really adding some like crazy retro grit to this track. Speaking of bass, I also have a Pro EQ on the top bass, taking out the sub and the high end. And on the sub bass, I have all the high end rolled off. You can't hear this on YouTube, but it is there. Also on the bass subgroup, I have a tri comp. I'm gonna take it out. And back in. Out. So it's a three band compressor and it's compressing. Tightening up that low end and giving it some focus. And then the saturation knob. This is the tri comp I have on the keys bus, and we'll listen to the saturation and how it sounds in the mix. Just, it really makes it pop out. So if you have a vocal track and a dense mix, um, the saturation knob will come in handy. Speaking of mix, I did want to talk about the VU meter plugin. They have it for free, but it has really come in handy with my mixing. I've got the kick hitting about zero, and I've got the bass bus hitting at zero as well on this VU meter. A decent mix without even having to listen, which is nice. Speaking of bonus things that you get with Sphere, all of the paid add-ons for Studio One 5 with Sphere, that includes the Fat Channel XT and all of the uh, additional modules and the VT1 and the 500 thing. I used the VT1 on the pad track to smooth it out. So this is emulating an actual analog piece of gear that Presonus makes. This is the pad track without the VT1. And it's a little harsh. And then I engaged the VT1 and rolled off some of the high end. But it also kind of warmed it up on the low end a little bit. And it just sounds really smooth. You also get this with Sphere, which is why I think it's such a no-brainer. So if you haven't watched the last video I made about Studio One 5 and Sphere, you should. One final thing, and I'm not even sure if this has been updated. I just found it on accident. I wanted to see if I could use all stock plugins, so I used the stock Room Reverb for the snare track. And it sounds kind of garbagey on its own, but in the mix, it sounds great. That's the hall. This is the room algorithm. This is the medium hall. 
this the small room. I really like the way the small room sounds. I think if you were, if you want your reverb to sound like not like a reverb, this would be a good choice for you. In the mix, though, I really like the way the hall sounds. Disengage the reverb, and now I'll engage it. I don't know if you can tell, but it's really just filling out the sound of the snare. Thank you for watching this. Thumbs up to this video if you like it, and give it a thumbs down if you are still recording on a cassette or track in your mother's basement. I've been there. You've all been there. It sucks. It sucks. Oh, and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to learn how to get your song. In this video, we're going over some of the new slash old flush, but in this video, we're going over some of the old 